year. This plant was just added about six months ago. Based on reports that, that I helped gather from people who oversee land trusts and open space parcels and land preserves, uh, because it's an example of a plant that not only is very prolific growing along roadsides, and if you note it here, you can see how dense it is. This is a plant that probably only been here you know, maybe five years, I'm just, I'm kind of guessing, but these plants reproduce, or actually they spread very quickly. This is a perennial species, it's also herbaceous, so it will die back when you get the, the hard frost in the fall, but it has very nasty rhizomes, those underground creeping stems. Every plant that you see here is all connected by these rhizomes. Mugwort very rarely produces seeds in North America, so that's not a way that it's going to spread but it will just spread by, by um, sending those little runners under the soil, new plants pop up. So if you actually were dig, to, could dig this up, you'd have this amazing matrix of plants with the rhizome. Um, the plants are very difficult to control, as you can imagine. You can try to pull them. You can, can um, sometimes herbicides can be used, but they're not always successful. A, a big challenge, and not, and not just because it's, it's in disturbed areas where we're starting to see it more along roadsides, but this is what we end up finding. A lot of open areas, nice and sunny, just getting very, very dense patches of mugwort. But it is something to take note of. And one of my take-home messages, yes, there's a lot of mugwort right here, but what we'd love to see is all of us recognizing the small seedlings, getting these plants when they're small, when they're young, hand-pulling them, digging them, getting rid of, get rid of them in the first year or two. You'll have so much fewer problems later on. And no, we can't always do that. And because sometimes the, the, by the time we realize what we've got, it's very well established. You might buy a property and it's full basis. But the more you do to recognize the plants when they're small, the more successful you're going to be. You do have options for well-established plants. Um, the other, the other take-home message I would say is that you have to stay with your control for more than one or two or maybe three years. It's not going to be enough to have one volunteer party or one uh, time to control in your backyard, because if you let things go, what you, what's going to happen? It all is going to come back, that's right, with time. And what if you mow it for year after year? If you that's, Mowing can, can be successful in some cases. What Any kind of control that you do, especially above ground, is helping to stress the plants. If you mow, cut things, if they, we're not using any chemicals, but if you're doing mechanical control or hand pulling, Every time you, you remove the plant, the plant wants to grow more. Uh, the goal of a plant is to, is to really to grow, produce seeds or, or you know, new plants and die. And you stop that process. So as you stress the plants, they use up the material they stored in their roots to send up new shoots, new plants. And so over time, you can stress the plants and maybe then you can introduce other species to come in and maybe help, hopefully outcompete the invasives that are, are stressed and, and hopefully dwindling. Okay. So that is certainly one of the approaches. Japanese knotweed that we looked at the example of um, by the table, people have said that if you have knotweed in your lawn and you're constantly mowing your lawn, that will be a good way to, to try to take care of Japanese knotweed. If it's growing in a field or along a riverbank, that's you know, it's a different story.